Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudo Bullio playing vanilla Minecraft 15W41B of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition. And in this video I'm going to be talking about witch farms. Um, if you have seen Exuma's new uh, witch farm design, you might notice this world map. This is actually the, the download that he provided in the video in which he uh, describes his new design. Uh, that new design is due to the fact that the shifting floor design, that's pretty typical, uh, relies on a bug that is going to be patched in the 1.9 release. Uh, it's already patched in the latest snapshot, so so um, he had to redo the witch farm design, and he came up with this one. Uh, it's uh, less efficient than the old design, but really still not too bad. Uh, the thing that really impressed me about this design uh, was this circuit here. Uh, and, uh, you'll notice that this piston is extended. Uh, this circuit has to be providing power to this piston, uh, in a way that is both tileable and uh, stackable. <laughs> and and uh, so that's what uh, this block of redstone here, uh, these two hoppers and this comparator, that's what they're all doing. Uh, and they're doing that in this just tiny little space. Uh, the circuit is just genius. I, I tried over and over and over again to see if I could figure out other ways to do this, and I just couldn't. Everything I tried was interfering with each other on the in the stacking or the tiling. Uh, so hats off to Exuma for designing this. It's it's really quite impressive. I l I love this circuit, uh, but it is uh, it does require a, a fair bit of resources. You know, you've got two hoppers and a block of redstone and a couple of pistons plus the comparator, uh, and if you uh, along with all the tripwire, of course. Uh, and, and if if you multiply that by the 27 spaces uh, where this has to uh, where all this stuff has to be. It does require a fair bit of resources, and I saw a few people commenting uh, about the resource requirement of this farm. Uh, not that it's really any more expensive than uh, traditional witch farm designs with the shifting floors, uh, but it does require a fair bit of resources, and so I thought I might uh, try my hand at designing something that was less resource intensive. Uh, so I'm going to head over to uh, to the map uh, of the design that I came up with, and I'll see you over there in just a second. Okay, here I am at an alternate uh, witch farm design. This is the one that I came up with. Um, this is actually using the uh, same world map uh, of Exuma's design. I just took his, and I tried tweaking it at first. Uh, first tweaking it a little bit and then tweaking it a lot, and then a little bit some more, and then a lot some more, and I just was not able to improve on his design. It's it's really, really solid. Um, this one uh, I designed more or less from scratch, uh, and uh, this one uses, uh, it's another flushing design, but this one runs on a clock uh, rather than relying on tripwire. Uh, so it is inherently less efficient. Uh, the question is how much less efficient. Um, in the tests that I've been running, uh, I'm hitting about 80 to 85 percent of the efficiency of uh, Exuma's farm. Uh, he mentioned that he sees about 5,200 drops per hour, at least in the test that he did. Um, here I'm seeing 4,400 to 4,500 drops per hour, uh, which is which is really not too bad considering the resource requirements for this. Uh, but I thought I might be able to improve that maybe up to about 90% of Exuma's farm. And so I designed this clock over here. And, and I want to talk about this for a moment. Um, this Right now, this is covered with a layer of barrier blocks uh, topped with a layer of glass just to prevent mob spawning. Uh, let me get rid of that. And down two. I think, I think it's over eight. There we go. Uh, Alright, so this here is actually, um, it's something that I refer to as an interference clock. Uh, this is actually two clocks, uh, where one clock is interfering with the operation of the other clock in order to provide a different effect. Uh, so right here we see a standard Ethonian hopper clock. I'm taking two signals off of this one, uh, one over here and one over here. Uh, and I have another clock here. This is just a tiny little subtraction clock, uh, 1.2 tick uh, subtraction clock, six ticks on, six ticks off. And this is uh, feeding into an off pulse limiter over here, uh, which is powering this block. Uh, this block is powered for, I think, nine redstone ticks and unpowered for three redstone ticks. 
Uh, but this block here is right next to one of the hoppers of the hopper clock, uh, which means that when this block is powered, items cannot move from this hopper over into this hopper. So I'm actually altering the behavior of the Ethonian hopper clock. Uh, and the altered behavior is that this hopper empties much, much slower than this hopper over here. And if we were to sit here and watch this block of redstone move back and forth, we notice that it spends a lot more time on this side over here than it does on this side. In fact, it spends about three times as much uh, over here. Uh, so I have, um, uh, it spends, I think, about 21 seconds over here, a little bit more than 21 seconds, and a little bit more than seven seconds over here. Uh, so the water that gets dispensed here uh, this uh, platform will stay dry for 21 seconds and the water pulse will last for 7 seconds to, to flush mobs out. Uh, and I designed this uh, specifically to allow me to play around a little bit more with the timings because I thought maybe I could boost the efficiency up to about 90%. Uh, or at least 90% of Exuma's farm. Um, and so uh, this clock allows me to play around with timings uh, in two ways. Uh, one, I can change the amount of items that are in these hoppers that are going back and forth. And two, I can change the number of ticks that this little subtraction clock has. Uh, now, I haven't played around with this all that much, and that's because uh, for the resource requirements here, uh, 80 to 85 percent of uh, efficiency of Exuma's farm, I think, is is good enough. Uh, all told, I've um, not in, not including the collection point down there. Uh, this is less than two stacks of redstone, and um, I think maybe about 40 iron ingots, uh, plus only three comparators in the whole thing. So uh, it's really, relatively speaking, resource light. Um, it is less efficient, as I mentioned. Uh, I think the efficiency could be boosted a little bit. Uh, but this farm also has one disadvantage that Exuma's farm doesn't. Uh, when a, a hostile mob spawns, uh, basically a timer starts, and they've got about 30 seconds before they're eligible for despawning if no players are around. Uh, so if I'm AFKing, you know, high in the sky somewhere, uh, and uh, I want to, um, I want to use this uh, farm in order to uh, farm potions. What I'm going to want is I'm going to want to get the witches that are here to my position before that 30 second time runs out. Uh, because after that 30 second time, some of the witches are going to despawn. And now for Exuma's de design, as soon as they spawn, they start getting flushed out because they trigger the tripwire. Uh, and that means that uh, you've got a lot more of that 30 seconds to transport them to your location. Uh, for this farm design though, uh, when the witch spawns here, they could wait up here on this platform for 20 seconds before the water even starts. Uh, so many of the witches that uh, um, that get to you, if you're going to be transporting them near your location, many of them are, are probably going to despawn. So not only is this going to produce 80 to 85 percent of the witches of Exuma's farm design, but many of those 80 to 85 percent are actually going to despawn by the time you get them to your location. So if you're going to be, uh, if you want uh, to farm potions. Uh, this is probably not the way to go. You're, um, go back to Exuma's design because that is going to be much more efficient than this one. Uh, but uh, I, I will include a world uh, a download uh, world download in the description here. Uh, if you want to play around with this, I'm not going to talk about the ins and outs of all the different stuff here. Uh, but uh, I will uh, I, I will include a download in case you're interested in taking a look. So. Uh, I think that's all I've got then for this video. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments, and uh, thanks for watching.